Meet the Press is the longest running television show in American history. It first aired in 1947, and today it got a new host. She was the best moderator of any of the 2020 presidential and vice presidential debates, Kristen Welker. But her and her team showed up today for an interview with Donald Trump with a bad game plan. They didn't show up to play like Coach Prime. Donald Trump steamrolled the Meet the Press team over and over again. Showing up prepared to interview Donald Trump should be no mystery at this point. What was most disappointing about his appearance on Meet the Press is how badly the American people were served today. They were not informed. They were misled. They were not enlightened. They were gaslit. They were lied to, and they were propagandized to by a former president who steamrolled the host asking him questions. One of the reasons why is this. Whomever instructs television news anchors that they must run through a schedule, that they must ask 12 questions or 13 or 14 or whatever the number may be for there to be a successful interview does not understand the nature of the moment. The only way to sit and effectively interview Trump is to have the ability to extemporize, to have the agility to react in real time the way that Mehdi Hassan did with Vivek Ramaswamy. If you go to Donald Trump's lair with a preset set of questions, he will filibuster, he will steamroll, he will lie, and he will succeed in delivering his insanities to the American people unchecked, which is exactly what happened this morning. Now, Kristen Welker did try to say over and over again that he was not telling the truth. In my estimation, she did it feebly. But more than that, she allowed Donald Trump to maneuver her into a position where she was speaking for Democrats. Over and over again, Kristen Welker was enunciating the Democratic Party's position. She said, no, Democrats don't believe this. That's not what her role should be. Trump maneuvered her into being a spokesperson for the opposition party, furthering the links, furthering the attacks, the bonds, tightening them in his access of attack against his mutual enemy, the media and the Democratic Party. Here's the thing. Why won't the American media take Donald Trump literally and seriously about everything he said? Is there a new dogma, a new doctrine, where every day resets as if we live in a collective reality show episode where what happened before is completely erased? Where what he said last Tuesday doesn't matter? That there's a reset button for every Sunday? Because what Donald Trump has said clearly is he's running for president to seek retribution. Retribution against who, you may ask? Well, his political enemies. It was an interesting question that Kristen Welker scratched the surface with, but didn't penetrate very deeply on. Who exactly will he lock up? Who needs punishment? What about the fact that he asked the Joint Chiefs Chairman if the military could shoot peacefully protesting Americans in their legs as they walked by the White House. Does any of this give anybody pause? Does anybody think that any of these things are appropriate for theoretical questions, given the outlandish violence this man incited? Over and over and over again, in this interview... Donald Trump claimed he won a rigged election that was stolen from him. It is not true. And there should have been no other question. 
that followed that question. It was a golden opportunity miss. A one hour and 15 minute window where Donald Trump could have been questioned about his lie. The lie that is poisoning the headwaters of America's civilization. It's not just our politics. Our American civilization is at stake. Our society, our culture, all of it is dependent on elections. Our society is structured on the basis of assigning power that results from a choice made by the people in an election about who amongst us gets to make the laws? Who gets to exercise limited power for a limited term and never can take away our rights? Who are those people we invest with responsibility? That's our decision. We need to understand as a people who this man is. And except for a very few small number of circumstances, seven years on, the ability of Donald Trump to steamroll every single person who asks him a question working for a national television network is appalling. And it's dangerous. And it's part of the reason so many Americans have unplugged from the media. They don't believe anything. Why would they? How could they? When you watch what happened today. Why was Donald Trump given an unimpeded avenue with meek occasional interjections about what was real and what was not to say outrageous things such as Democrats support the killing of babies after birth as their abortion policy. Over and over again, he blustered with absurdities, proclaiming as if it was 2015 again that he would magically, with his skills as a dealmaker, bring people together. What? Did we just really all, as a nation, sit on Sunday morning? And watch that play out in 2023? Questions about his policies? It is beyond belief. It is beyond the pale. It is incomprehensible. This moment requires the American people have a clear understanding about what is at stake? What is at stake is their liberty and their freedom. In the weeks ahead, the government will shut down. Impeachment proceedings will start against President Biden on the basis of a kangaroo court decision. None of these things are separate. They are all part of an ongoing story the greatest story of our time that remains invisible to the overwhelming majority of the American media. And that is the assault on American democracy, the American way of life by a political party turned extremist that has become unfaithful to the U.S. Constitution and has turned its back on the American people for power's sake. Everywhere, there is evidence. Donald Trump is orchestrating the impeachment of Joe Biden from Mar-a-Lago. It's incredible that so many of our institutions can't see what is plainly staring back at them in their faces. It's not a politician with a different agenda. It's not somebody with an unorthodox tax proposal. 
It is a threat. It is a malignancy. And it should be treated as such. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our Warning Premium community. You can find out more in the description below.